Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's me, Maligator Mom, and I am here today with Fury, Storm, and Riot, and we are getting ready to celebrate the 4th of July tomorrow. So as you can imagine, with three different dogs, they have three different reactions to fireworks. Riot is a very solid, stable, passive dog when it comes to fireworks, so he can come and be with us and enjoy that celebration. Fury, on the other hand, is very fearful. It gives her anxiety, and she's just not a big fan. And then Storm, uh, she's still kind of a puppy. I haven't had her for a 4th of July celebration yet, so we're gonna see how that goes. But either way, in today's video, what I wanna break down for you is one, how I got Riot to um, be such a solid, stable dog, despite all these environmentals. And two, if you do have a dog who struggles, like Fury does, I'm gonna give you some good tips to help you get through the holiday. Okay, you guys, so first things first, you need to understand that it is not the responsibility of other people to worry about whether or not your dog is conditioned to deal with loud noises or whether or not you have been a responsible owner and uh, securely kenneled your dog during fireworks celebrations. This is not the worry or concern of others. This is your responsibility. The 4th of July uh, is, a predictable holiday, right? We know it's coming. It happens on the fourth day of the seventh month every single year. So you know it's coming. You need to prepare for it. Be a good dog owner. If you're not quite sure um, what you could do and you're here for this video, then great, because I'm about to give you some really good tips. Um, however, also I want you to keep in mind, if you are going to be celebrating with fireworks this year, do not be a total piece of shit about it because there are dogs who have a lot of anxiety around this, but even more so, there are veterans and folks who are suffering with PTSD. And the least that we can do is honor and show them the respect to respect that curfew. They need to have a predictable end to that suffering, to that night where it puts them in that terrible mental state. Because chances are that these folks have actually fought for your right to celebrate this day. So just keep that in mind, be respectful, respect that curfew, and let's go ahead and get into some tips for how you can um, safely get your dog through the night if they're a dog that has problems with fireworks. So here are some great tips that should help you out if you have a dog that really doesn't like fireworks. The number one thing I want you to do is be aware of what time it is. So most of the fireworks celebrations aren't gonna start kicking off until it gets dark, which depending on where you live, you know, you should know about what time that's gonna happen. So I want you to think about that time and then an hour beforehand, I want you to get your dog out and go wear them out. Take them for a long walk, throw the frisbee, throw the ball, whatever it is they like to do, go get them nice and tired. I also want you to make sure that you have moved your crate to a very quiet room. So for example, Fury's crate is typically in my front room, which is right next to the window where we're setting fireworks out on the street. So that's not where I'm gonna keep her for the fireworks celebration. I actually move her crate into the back bedroom at the furthest point away from the street in the house that I can get and that's where I put her. I draw the shades and I close the door. So make sure that wherever you're crating your dog this evening, it's gonna be back where it's quiet. So put them in a basement, put them in your laundry room, put them someplace you know where there's no windows or doors, um, just as far away from the noise as you can possibly get. That's an easy step, an easy precaution that we can take. Then go ahead and put your dog in this crate and make sure, like, like make doubly sure that this crate is locked and secure because a lot of dogs actually end up escaping during fireworks celebrations. They break out of their kennel or their crate and they're scared and they end up running away and getting away and getting lost. So a lot of pets turn up uh, at the pound after the 4th of July. So on July 5th, you're gonna see that the pounds are full because a lot of people haven't taken that precaution and secured their dogs. So just make sure that wherever you're putting, the, wherever you're putting their dog, they are securely put away. Happy 4th of July, even if it's not 4th of July today. I just wanted to take a minute and tell everybody, please don't bring your dogs to fireworks. They, they don't know what the boom boom says in the sky and it freaks them out and it, they run away and they don't know even where they are. They say, 
Oh man, that's scary. I'm out of here. And then they say, oh man, where do I live? So please don't do it. Happy 4th of July. Stay safe. I love everybody. This would take them. It's also a really good idea to go ahead and turn on some white noise. So this could be a fan. This could be maybe you throw on your Amazon Alexa to some spa music, right? Maybe you just keep your TV turned up a bit for them. But whatever you can do to try and drown out the noise that they're going to hear with something else, that's a win. So go ahead and put some white noise on for your dog. So now that we've talked about ways to manage the situation, what do you do if you want to fix it? Well, that's a process called counter conditioning. So what you're going to do is you're actually going to go online, even here on YouTube, and snag a soundtrack to fireworks playing. And I want you to get your dog in the room, and I want you to turn this sound on. And I know that sounds kind of scary, but start with the volume really low. And you're going to have to play with your dog to find out where their threshold is, because what we want to do is actually operate and start that counter conditioning under threshold. So if you turn the volume up loud enough that your dog now runs and retreats or hides or maybe they're panting or pacing, that means that that's a little too high. So you need to bring the volume down a little bit and find a nice volume where your dog can know that it's there but they're not having a negative response. That's called operating under threshold. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna start doing simple things. Start giving your dog treats. Hey, guess what? There's fireworks playing. Cool. I get treats. This isn't so bad. And then maybe you take it to the garage, which is what I do. And I'll throw the fireworks on my phone and just let it play. And we will do a training session. And so the dogs definitely know it's there, but they're pairing it or I'm pairing it with this positive, um, you know, positive experience, right? We're going to, we're going to train, we're going to play tug, we're going to get treats, all of these things. So eventually this will turn into that threshold going higher and higher. You're raising that threshold higher and higher. You're going to start turning up that volume a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more as your sessions continue to progress. So hopefully between now and 4th of July next year, you're going to see some improvement. Some other options for managing this, if you have a dog who has very severe anxiety, is to just go ahead and go to the vet and get them some, um, you know, tranquilizers. Because honestly, if your dog has a really severe reaction, like I've seen some dogs will claw at their crates until their nails bleed. You know, nobody wants their pet to be in this mental state. This is just not okay. That's a very severe reaction. And the kindest thing that you could possibly do for your pet is to go ahead and get them a tranquilizer so that they can sleep through this. Um, you know, and then work on some, on some ways to overcome this in the following year. But you know, everybody's in a different situation. Maybe this is a brand new dog for you. You don't know that they have this issue. Um, you know, do what you got to do. Do what the kindest thing is to do for your dog. Uh, another great option is thunder jackets. So um, thunder jackets kind of work by, it's, it's, it's almost like swaddling a baby. I guess that's the closest parallel I can draw. They just provide pressure. So the same way that you swaddle a baby and they feel nice and tight and closed in, it's the same exact effect when you talk about a thunder jacket for a dog. And those are relatively inexpensive and they're very easy to find. They're on Amazon. They also carry them at most pet stores. And then there's Riot. So this guy actually is super stable environmentally. I have taken him to fireworks shows. I've taken him to parades where, you know, the fire trucks are blaring their horns and sirens are going and all kinds of things. And he's never ever had any issue with any of that. So I got really, really lucky there. But um, a lot of how I was able to accomplish that started when he was not even home with me yet when he was just a you know days old and he was out at global canine and um what they do to work with these dogs from the very beginning to make sure that this exposure is happening from a young age so most of the um you know imprinting and, and things that your dog is going to need to be exposed to should happen between you know or at least by the time they're 16 weeks old so uh luckily for me global canine did a really good job exposing to riot to a lot of different sounds and environments from a very young age but um i just want to go ahead and i'm going to actually light off a firework here for you guys just so i you, you don't think i'm blowing smoke um, and show you guys just how totally unfazed he is by fireworks. And then I'll talk to you guys a little bit about uh, what that early exposure can actually mean for a dog. So I am gonna go ahead and let off this handheld uh, sparkler here. I do have mortars, but I'm not gonna set one off because this is the middle of the day and I do wanna be respectful of my neighbors. 
Um, but I will definitely upload a either Instagram story or a YouTube shorts or something showing you guys what that looks like. I'll get some video of it here on the 4th of July. See? But I did just want to at least have something to show you guys. So I'm going to light this here and um, we'll just maybe ask Riot for a little obedience while this is going off and see how it goes. Uh, I, I'm not necessarily expecting him to have, you know, robotic obedience during a distraction like this because this is something he sees like once a year. But I do have a very strong suspicion that he will definitely offer me obedience regardless of this going on. And I don't think that he's going to retreat or run away or tuck tail um, or have any kind of negative response at least. So let's go ahead and light this off and see how he does. All right. Sit. Sit. Now keep in mind, he has not seen or heard this in since the last 4th of July. Right, sit. Right, sit. Lay down. Right, you. You. So you're not sure about that. You. Good. Right. reaction, which is what I expected. So, a little curious, but, you know, not a negative reaction by any means. He definitely isn't going to, like I said, tuck tail and run. Um, so, you know, again, this, this has a lot to do with early exposure to noises and environmentals. And uh, I will definitely be uploading video of Riot when we're setting off the big fireworks and the mortars and the big uh, fountains and things. I'll definitely upload a video of that so that you guys can see what that looks like for him as well. So this is actual footage sent to me by Dash's breeder. And the pups are around four weeks old here. So it's absolutely vital that you understand how to properly socialize your puppy and expose them to a wide array of environmentals, including sound, from the earliest weeks of life. This is how you achieve a solid, stable, and confident dog. A puppy's ideal socialization and environmental exposure period is between 0 and 16 weeks of age, which means the first four months of a puppy's life will have a lasting effect on how they interpret the world around them once they're older. It's much more difficult to introduce or overcome new experiences, including fireworks, with an older dog. If you're interested in getting your puppy off on the right track, or perhaps you want to start some of the counter conditioning exercises I mentioned earlier, simply Google Socialization Sounds Playlist. And before we get out of here today, I do want to just throw a few of these around too. These are um, like little firecrackers that you throw. They're super, super loud. Uh, I, would, I would compare the sound to like those blanks when you fire a blank in gunfire for um, like his bite work training and that kind of thing. So I'm gonna throw one of these with him out here and see how he does as well. So these are very loud and he does not give two shits. I think most dogs, if they heard a sound like this, would probably run away in fear. So. You know, he's definitely a very, very solid dog. I think he'd like to try to catch one in his mouth, to be honest, which you're not gonna do that. No, you're not. But uh, stay tuned for those 4th of July fireworks videos. I'll definitely get those posted. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for today. Thank you so much for watching. As always, please ring the bell for notifications, hit the subscribe button, and I will see you guys same time next week. Have a happy and safe 4th of July. Hey, do you guys live in Nashville, Tennessee? Because if you do, Riot and I have a secret we want to share with you. This is a pet-friendly fireworks stand, so I was able to bring Riot with me. We had an absolute blast, and it was a treat because the owner actually came up to us and said, is that a Malinois? I said, yes, it is. And so he was like, oh, that's so awesome. He's a big fan of Malinois. He had a lot of fun meeting Riot, and he actually offered to give a discount to anyone who comes into his fireworks shop and mentions Maligator Mom. So if you're in Nashville and you haven't yet bought your fireworks, head down to F8 Fireworks. They are right off of Nolensville Road, just outside of Brentwood. So head over to them, mention Maligator Mom, get your discount, and bring your pup along with you.